Do you want to become a permanent part of the channel? Well, now you can check out the Alliteration Gaming Patreon. Here, you're going to find different tiers that all let you get involved in my videos, as well as provide you some shout outs, exclusive Discord access, and the ability to see my content early and ad free. And if you're new here, you're going to need an account on the UGN site to sign up for events, locate stores, and of course, accrue points to redeem for free cards in the mail. Signing up with my exclusive referral code alliteration is going to start you off with 50 bonus points as well as support my work in the process. Regardless of how you help me out, thanks so much. I really appreciate your support. Now let's get on to the video. Good evening, my dear viewers. Uh, my name is Levi Luan. Welcome to another alliteration gaming video. And behind me is the coolest card shop you have never heard of. I am out of town right now in Houston, Texas, doing a couple of provisional store championship runs and checking out some of the locals here. And this place has got to be the coolest store I have ever seen. What you're seeing right here, my dear viewers, is the Aegis Creative Company primary facility. They are a 3D printing store turned card shop that also boasts an insectarium inside. How is all of this possible? How did all of this come to be? Well, there's a long story and a lot of history behind it. But for now, let's just get inside this place and see what it's all about. So as you can see, the Aegis facility is essentially a store turned clubhouse turned hangout slash card shop for the boys. The man behind the magic is Mr. Julio. He is the one that makes everything happen and essentially his mantra is get everyone together, have a good time, and have fun. He's here to make sure everyone's smiling and when you walk in a place like this, you truly feel the brotherhood and the camaraderie and it really just feels like you're immediately walking into a big family and all of the food and drinks and catering and giving cards one away to the other. It all just plays perfectly into the entire theme, and it's just a wonderful place to be. This is not the biggest card shop in the world. This is not a million square feet with all the bells and whistles and every product you can possibly imagine. This is our clubhouse for our family. All right, guys, so I have sitting here with me the man behind the magic, Mr. Julio. And uh, first of all, sorry I'm not sounding too great right now, guys. As you can see, uh, I've been having way too much fun screaming and hollering and playing card games and board games all weekend in this man's wonderful shop. So first of all, thank you, Julio. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, but so just kind of tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself where the shop came from right tell me the, the the tale of humble beginnings of a little 3d printing store to now the biggest clubhouse that i've ever been in <laughs> uh yeah absolutely so what had happened was we got 3d printers at the house about three years ago it was a hobby and then it's kind of like pringles get, can't have just one so one turn true that's how i am with pretzels <laughs> exactly yeah. oh my god especially with some uh, brown mustard oh man a little bit of whipped cream what oh yeah oh, oh, oh i get right. i get nasty with it oh you gotta show man you gotta show me that hey some <laughs> like it's sweet <laughs> um so yeah well uh, eventually we, we had a uh we got kid uh got married Right, and I decided we we're gonna have a kid. We had a kid, 
decided during the pandemic to open up a business. I can imagine that 3D printers in the house with a kid, not the best plan. It was not, it was, <laughs> it was not. So I said, what happened was we started off in a little uh, office space uh, down, uh, literally down the road on 1960 here. And we started with just like one or two, like we had one or two printers. Mm -hmm. And what had happened was we were playing Star Wars Destiny. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that's where it all started. Um, because what happened was I got a bunch of guys together and said, hey, it was called the Council of Five. And we said, hey, I'm about to put $1,800 on my first UV printer. And then I that kind of just like kicked the gates open because mm -hmm. then we became a print shop. And we were doing these uh, Ronin, uh, these uh, Fantasy Flight Ronin cards. Mind you, uh, we got in, we got into like massive trouble. So I don't know if you guys know about the story of FFG, but there's a, a on the website it says uh, uh, not allowed to be commercially printed. Yeah, that was our fault. <laughs> That's why we did that. I mean, I, I I definitely some of my old head viewers are certainly more than familiar enough with Fantasy Flight games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we started printing on we started printing on dice, and then after that, uh, we got our first uh, printer, uh, Octavia, which actually is really funny. She's right here. Um, That's the old girl. This is the old girl. This is Octavia. <laughs> uh, we uh, she was the one that actually propelled the business into like a full fledged print shop, um, and then we decided to upgrade to uh, what we have now out in the back, which is our uh, Xerox uh, Xena Warrior Princess. She's all the way all the way back there but then at the same time uh people wanted stuff to be printed uh not just uh not just card but also 3d printed yeah, right they wanted the real stuff they got the real stuff so we started getting bigger and we started getting bigger and bigger so we start off with i start off with two printers now we're up to 18 printers um and they're like literally we're working the whole time these guys were here so then what had happened was uh, a friend of mine uh dino uh, known as the advisor, actually, he actually has a nickname. The he's Bendu, the man in the middle, is what he's he he is. We call them. Uh, he introduced us to a game called uh, My Hero Academia. He was actually my teacher. Your sensei. <laughs> my sensei. Yeah, he was actually my sensei. You know, Mr. Kyle Wright sitting yeah. right over there, three yeah. feet from us. Yeah, that's my teacher. Yeah. That's my <laughs> and then um, uh, the then after that, when I started with MHA, I'm like, wow, you know. Uh, I now uh, moved into a brick and mortar. So I moved into this original facility that you hear, which is known as Facility One. Spoilers. <laughs> and uh, essentially what had happened was I decided, oh, I can get the product cheap. And my barrier to entry uh, was going to be interesting. So I decided that I was going to do 3D printing and card printing kind of in the morning time or when, when people weren't playing. Mm -hmm. So what had happened was, all of a sudden, people just started showing up on Saturday to play games. Yeah, because you sat there and went, oh, well, I happen to have a storefront, so let's get some product for the boys. And now, you can't keep the boys out. <laughs> yeah, we, we literally can't. There's boys over here, boys over there. You can hear them. <laughs> you probably hear them. Um, and it's really fun because uh, the thing is, is that we stay up super late. Like right now, we're doing this video at like what? It's a, it's it's like two thirty ish right yeah, now. Yeah. In the I was like, when are you kicking everyone out, Julio? And he was like, two ish. Two -ish and I was like, cool. That's when we'll do this. <laughs> and you know why we kicked ourselves out? Yeah. So why? Uh, uh, today at two because what did we do yesterday because yesterday well, today <laughs> technically this morning slash last night we left around like 4 30 a.m yeah because we couldn't stop playing the transformers deck building card game. yeah absolutely we wanted to figure it out i mean that was pretty yeah that was pretty interesting it was, fun game. That was, it was fun yeah game. It was, i enjoyed it i love the mechanics of it um so what you guys are not seeing is a, 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 imagine in your mind a, a, my personal board game collection that's actually uh, right like across from me right here, which is about 200 games. I actually have a couple games a that are games. out of print that are not being made anymore. Uh, some antiques. Yeah, I do have some antiques. Actually, I have a game that's older than I am, actually, that wow. I inherited from my father. Um, and then after I have you kind of go down, you'll see... Uh, 3D printers on one side and a bunch of tables on the other side because we've been playing MHA. Uh, well, Friday we went to Spectral, and then today we went to Aegis. We started at six with the crazy, the the insane crazy draft, which you'll see videos. Yeah, I mean, speaking like of today as a whole, right? 
you know, you invited me into your store with this like family atmosphere, all these amazing people in here. I walk in and you're throwing packs around willy nilly like a madman. You've got the fam up front, front counter, cooking homemade Puerto Rican food for all of us, feeding us no charge. And like, like what, where does all this come from, man? Where does the, like, what is the inspiration of just be like such an amazing, like, for the homies type of guy this has always been uh it's always been like that when i moved in miami when i was in miami actually um my friends the philosophy was my house is your house so that's why i did my house was usually a refuge so this time um it was really interesting because my wife is american so she doesn't actually she's having to adopt the idea of being like a cuban uh like being a part of a cuban household uh, with that philosophy, so a lot of people do seek refuge, you know, in this facility. That's why this facility is called the Home One. Mm -hmm. And the, essentially, today we were cooking food for people because we we're actually getting ready to open up our our store. Uh, this kind of segue. Facility number two. Facility number two. Ooh. This is the new one. Uh, we we expand from 1,040 square feet to now 1,600 square feet. Uh, we have now a designated player area that's 800 square feet where we can have have 40 uh, 40 players playing comfortably. Um, and we're gonna have two arcade machines. We're gonna have a nice, cool little like D and D uh, session where people can actually like go up and uh, it'll be streamed on our on our wow. on our channel, okay. which we're trying to bring back up again because I've been really missing doing that. And Twitch channel, Twitch yeah. channel, yep. Okay, and gonna then, get some 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 flat screens on the walls, playing some oh yeah, playing some alliteration gaming videos nonstop. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> absolutely. And well, the aspirations, that's especially what we're looking for. They yeah. need it. They need that's it. Bro. They need <laughs> it. They need the knowledge. <laughs> we definitely need the knowledge on that. One. <laughs> and uh, and then on top of that, the second facility, which is going to be the Mark II facility, it hasn't been given a name yet. Uh, it's going to have also a Cuban restaurant inside of it. Uh, that's why we were testing out the food here today to see if we can handle, uh, you know, feeding people. Uh, nobody had diarrhea and nobody vomited. So I was fed. I played I played card games. I played board games, and food was put into my mouth. Exactly. It was a pretty wonderful time. So you've told me about the printers. You've told me about the cards. Uh, there's a third caveat here we haven't explored yet, man. I got to ask, what's up with the mantises? So this is actually a really funny story. The reason why the second facility is being built out is because my wife's operation of mantis. So we have a shop called Fatal Mantis. Yes, Fatal Mantis. Uh, when I looked up the domain name, I told my wife, Fatal Mantis is taken. No, the domain was not taken. So we have FatalMantis.com. Yeah, as it turns out, the the competition for names and the prey mantis breeding uh, war territory not very large. It's, it's, no, it's definitely not. It's 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 definitely it's kind of interesting. As it turns out, we were a niche market. <laughs> we definitely we definitely are because what had happened was this store, uh, this particular store. What had happened was I made a bet with my wife. So Comic Palooza, I still remember it, it was uh, uh, twenty. It was 2020, uh, 2020 before the pandemic. Uh, she did entomology, and she's and I told her you are not going to be able to sell dead bugs at a comic book convention. I lost. I lost that bet very badly, and the bet that came at a cost. So she gets to take half the. She got to take half the facility, and now. Uh, uh, she's now taken all of it. Originally, the idea <laughs> was to do entomology, but then she told me, "Hey, I have mantis. I, I used to own mantises. That's what she did. And then all of a sudden, uh, the just mantises just started coming in. And then we realized there was a market for it. And then so she took care of the mantises. I'm the face. Like you have to. Understand. I'm at it right now. This morning, I had. I was at a." Uh, reptile Expo selling mantises. I mean, I'm telling you right now, it was nuts. Uh, and I then raced over here to be a part of the provisional store championship, right? Um, so, so your wife went from realizing she can sell people dead bugs to hey, we can sell them the live ones too. Heck yeah! And not just that, like the pet rock is now the mantis because everyone's coming out of the woodwork. Oh my god, there's a mantis shop. We have people constantly coming to the store to come and check out uh, the Mantis Menagerie, the Mantis that we have. 
Um, and of course we have some of the most exotic species. The one thing that we're really proud of, and she's done a lot of hard work, is getting the orchid mantises, which is those white ones. Those orchids are beautiful. No, I love how you said the word of mouth thing, right? Because it's so funny, because uh, you know, this is, Houston is where I learned to play the game. And then I moved away. And then I had a lot of people on my first trip back since learning how to play going, Levi, this shop, this ages place, coolest place in the world it's this card shop but it's like a clubhouse and we stay here till like 4 a.m and it's just the good locals vibes they hyped this place up to me so much like crazy but the entire time neglected to mention that half of that was the owner's wife's praying mantis breeding company they consistently neglected to ever mention that to like the resident insect obsessed Levi. <laughs> so when I walked in for the first time, I was like blown away by the shop. And then I also went, there's bugs here. <laughs> there's mantises. <laughs> <laughs> that literally is what happened. It was, it was, I was like a kid in the candy store the first time I ever came here and you guys sold me a mantis and it was the coolest thing ever. So what they do when you go to buy a mantis is they essentially take one of these and what are these, Julio? Uh, these are uh, Zilla cages. This is our small form factor for our smaller species like ghosts. And on top of that, like uh, species that are going from small to large. This is one of our smaller cages. And essentially what they do is they put this in your hand and say, this is your cage. Then they bring you to a few baskets full of leaves and twigs and sticks and little shrubbery and plastic fake bushes and ornaments. And they say, now put together your cage. Literally build a bear workshop for a praying mantis habitat. Literally the coolest thing I've ever seen. Literally the coolest thing I've ever seen and still cool with other people. It's been really popular. Well, thank you so much, Julio, for sitting down with me and of course, welcoming me into your amazing home, Mi Casa e Su Casa, right? Absolutely. Um, and before I let you go, please, I implore you to tell all the viewers at home, where can they find both of the Aegis facilities? Well, the good part is that you'll be able to find the Aegis facility in two locations. The uh, first one, they're literally right next to each other because we'll be moving out soon. So we're located at uh, 9637 lucky number seven uh, FM 1960 Road West we're in unit A and you'll see the big star symbol uh, that represents the Aegis Creative Company but we'll be moving over to uh, 9641 uh, FM 1960 Road West and of course that is a lot of letters and numbers so I'm also going to have Aegis's Facebook page linked down below and you can click on that link to get all the actual link to the actual maps address because directions are very 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 hard yeah, <laughs> Google can get it right. Well, Julio, one last thank you, my friend, very, very much for, again, not only letting me in here, but also for sitting down and doing this with me. Uh, as, a, as an artist, as a creator, when I come in and I see something amazing, I just can't help but want to capture it. And you gave me so much amazing stuff to capture, and this was a wonderful way to finish off the weekend, my Absolutely, friend. Absolutely, buddy. It thank was you. nice having you coming by. Likewise, Julio. Yeah. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Always.